Here's a new horse we have in training. She's roughly four years old and she's a Mustang. There is a freeze brand on her neck even. This is her second time in the round pen with me. Now yesterday I went through and started working on establishing direction and changing direction and you'll see in a second every now and then she still gets a little bit bound up and tries some old habits with me when I ask her to turn. But she's doing pretty well so far. So you see, I'm pointing and sending her off. And when I point, I really want her to hustle and move her feet. You can see she's kind of lazy about it. And she's not really taking it seriously when I ask her to just move off when I point and kiss at her. And so I hustled her around. And I step in front and point the other direction. And she turns in and leaves. She does that really nicely. She moves off a little better to the left. She's a little freer and she'll lope around better for me. And step in front again and I back up. And she licked and chewed so I left her alone for just a few seconds and I asked her to move off again. And now right here you're going to see where she gets a little trouble and I go to switch hands and point and she wants to turn her hind end to me. I don't allow that at any point and when I go to get after her she turns her butt so I'm going to cut her off and send her out the other way. You saw that time she remembered and she looked at me. And so we'll change over here and she figures it out and remembers that it's just a whole lot easier to turn. When I apply more pressure when she tries to turn her hind end to me. I'm making it uncomfortable and then as soon as she looks at me when I step in front of her, I'll back off. And you see right then I put my whip down and walked away from her when she turned in. And I walk in big arcs around her and just encourage her to keep her eyes on me and move her hind end away like she's doing here. And at this point, I still don't have a halter on her face. I want to wait till she's pretty much on my shoulder. And there I'll rub her neck. She's kind of standoffish. And... She still doesn't really like her face being rubbed on, or she didn't. She's getting better. And you see, I put my hand over her neck and just kind of rock her head towards me. I want her to be really comfortable with me touching her neck and her head. And you see, she's getting so good. She lowers her head right on down to the ground, and I'm definitely okay with that. And everything I do on one side, I will do on the other. So I step around to her right side, and I'm rubbing her neck. And I will put my hand over her neck and pull her head towards me and rub on her face. And you can see I kind of pull her head all the way around to the side. I want her to sort of wrap her neck around to the side. And at this point, I go ahead and put the halter back on her, and I'm going to work on desensitizing her to my rope. You see, she's gotten really good about that. Yesterday, she got pretty worried, but today she remembered and she was doing pretty good. When you do the desensitizing, you definitely want to make sure that your body language is very relaxed and passive. Desensitizing isn't about getting the horse to ignore what you're doing. It's really about teaching the horse to read your body language and if you're being quiet, then the horse should also be quiet and still. When your body language becomes more assertive and active, then you want the horse to be paying attention and moving off either if you are sending him or cueing the hindquarters to move or whatever it is that you're asking them for. But they need to be able to tell the difference, so you must be aware of what your body is doing. And so now I have picked up my whip and I'm desensitizing to that as well. And you see, I try and keep one leg kind of 
one knee bent and just stay really relaxed. I'm trying to make sure that most of my body is not moving and I'm just swinging that whip around. And this is just another level of stimulus that you want the horse to be comfortable with and understand that you have control over the situation that you are trying to keep her safe and comfortable and no matter what's going on around her if she is paying attention to you that she's going to be fine and I've switched sides and I'm going to do the same thing you want to swing the whip in big arcs with your whole arm and I'm smacking that ground pretty vigorously it's making a lot of noise and it's really swinging around and you can hear the tail of the whip going through the air and she's handling all of that really really well and now I'll stand in front and I'm gonna swing in a bit of a figure eight over her head and this is especially scary to the horse because it's making a lot of noise and it's going all around their ears and face you see she does really well there and I've used the whip and I rubbed her on the neck with it and I'm gonna swing the end of it around her neck and move it around horses don't naturally like their faces being touched and handled they don't like stuff swinging around their ears or anywhere near their face so this is gonna help her when it comes to just being handled on the front end of her body be comfortable with things being moved around and swinging this helps with bridling or if their ears are hard to handle or anything else this is just a small step towards getting them more comfortable with all of that and after I do some desensitizing and rubbing her with the whip then I will swing it around again and I'm gonna swing it and ask her to walk with me while I do so instead of making a big deal about the whip being around her all the time I want to move away while I'm moving it so that she has a little bit more confidence about the whole thing horses develop a lot of confidence with new scary things if it moves away and they're able to follow it and so I throw the whip down at this point and I'm gonna just go to her side and rub on her and right there she started to push her shoulder into me a little bit and so I asked her to bend her nose towards me to take her shoulder away it's a small thing, but that can help keep me a little bit safer because younger horses or especially horses that were brought in from the wild, even though she's obviously not wild at this point, if they revert to some tendencies, if you've got their head tipped towards them and they freak out or try to kick or anything, usually you can get their head bent around and swing the hip away. And so until I know her a little bit better, I'm going to do... Um, just a few things to try and keep myself as safe as possible and I've desensitized with the rope a lot over the last couple days and now I pass the rope under her belly and I'm not gonna seesaw it across her back and under her belly I'm just gonna hold it steady and then kind of bring it up against her girth area and then release and then apply the pressure again and release it you see that she's handling that really nicely as well then when she stands real quiet and I'm gonna rub on her let her know she did good and at this point I'm doing something a little bit different and I'm gonna put the rope around her left fetlock and I'm gonna apply just a little bit of pressure and I'm gonna wait on her until she picks her foot up for me and there she lifts it up and I pull it forward and I apply a little bit more pressure and I'm waiting on her and I am literally leading her by her foot and this is just something I'll do to see how they handle pressure around their feet and something touching their leg because that can be quite scary as well and she did fantastic with that And now I'm going to work on moving her shoulders away just a little bit. I chip at all of these things just a little tiny bit at a time every day that I have them out. I might spend 90 seconds on something and then go do something else and then come back and spend two minutes on it again. But I'm always working on all of these things just a little bit at a time. 
so that we go through a lot of exercises, but the horse doesn't typically feel overwhelmed with one in particular at any time because I try to make sure it's in short little spurts. And that helps keep them sort of interested in the lesson as well. And this part takes, a few, takes about a minute, I believe, but I went to flex her and she's being just a little bit stiff and kind of heavy on the halter. And I wanted to show that it can take a little bit of time, even a horse that's being still. It can take some time for them to understand to drop off the halter. And there she gave a little bit, and so I gave the rope right back to her. And I'll pick up again. It is completely natural for horses to push on pressure, especially on that halter. The first time you halter a foal, if you try to pull on them right away, they are going to rear up and flip out you have to teach them to give to pressure that's not natural to them and she did really well and I just do it a couple of times and then I'll take a break from that every little bit gets them softer and softer and now I've that I've done some desensitizing and been in close and flexed her and spent time just rubbing on her and loving her I'm gonna ask her to go back to work and I'm gonna push her hindquarters away and send her off in the other direction you see here she gets a little bit resistant. She has a tendency to have the you can't get me attitude. And so it's not too big of a deal. Right here, she went to ignore me. And when I applied more pressure, she swung her hip at me. And I swatted her right on the rump to push that hip away. Along with my free lunging, when I change direction, they can't point their butt at me when they turn around. And I definitely will not tolerate a horse swinging their hind end towards me when I am lunging them. Um, it's unsafe and they need to be taught not to do that. And you can see at this point she doesn't anymore. She overreacts a few times. She has learned to kind of pull against pressure and sort of ignore what you're asking and try to get out of doing it. And so instead of getting mad and really wailing on her trying to get my way I'm just going to keep applying that level of pressure that she's reacting from and wait on her if she's trying to find the right answer then I'll leave her alone but if they overreact there's usually a reason and right there she ignored me and didn't yield her hind quarters and so I got after her and really hustled her hind end around and then just carried on with the lessons if it never happened and all I'm trying to do is getting her to pass between me and that panel. You see I've got my tack hung up on the rail. And so I'm going to work on sending her between me and the rail a couple of times. And when she's real quiet, like right there, I'm not going to make a big deal out of it. I'm just going to turn her around and ask her to send. And then when she steps up there and she's quiet and offers to stop by that saddle and everything else, I'm going to rub her and let her know that she did a really good job.